one of the busiest subway systems in the world, New York City. People come from all walks of life and represent the city's diversity. But no matter where they're from, they've all got one destination to reach. Piaget sur Piaget is one of them. Sometimes just taking the subway and riding on the subway um, as an African man, uh, you're almost pushed aside as if you don't exist. Uh. Piaget says he often feels targeted because of his skin color. Well, statistically, uh, just because of the color of my skin and my background and probably my hair as well, um, that makes me a target for suspicious behavior. Racism has is, is always been here. And do I feel it's going to go away? No. Rainer Scott says more communication is needed between cops and citizens to reduce tensions. In regards to being pulled over, even on the streets, we get pulled over more than any other race. I don't feel protected by the police, and I certainly am concerned when I have interactions with the police because I know that I may be at a disadvantage. Many people say racism still exists today in the United States, but just in a different form. I know that the police um, will more likely stop me as opposed to a European American. Protect and serve is their job. Um, that's a great idea, but it's actually to enforce laws. As race relations reach a new boiling point, the next U.S. president will have to find a way to mitigate tensions between police and African Americans. Educating police, yes, definitely. Um, but also educating people on peaceful protests because there's always going to be those people that you can educate them until they're blue in the face and they're just racist. My skin color and your skin color does not determine the person that I am or the person that you are. This is Harlem, a predominantly African-American neighborhood in New York. Over the past few years, violent clashes between police and African-Americans have sparked protests in various cities, including Charlotte, Ferguson and Baltimore. Many people we spoke to say it's a case of history repeating itself. The only difference is now there's a camera to prove it. Reporting in New York, Archit Sashadri, we on. It's a rough scene out there when you travel in the subway and you interact with people. Joining us live is Archit Chashadri, our correspondent who's been following that story. President Obama is the first African-American president. How does the community feel about his legacy here, Archit? The United States created history when they elected Barack Obama as their first African-American president. He served two terms, this term, of course, almost coming up, but it was a moment of joy, a moment of victory for not only African-Americans, but many other immigrant communities here in the U.S. They many felt that they would never see a president of color taking on such an important leadership role. We've seen Barack Obama break many stereotypes, being involved in many cultural celebrations. Of course, he's also uh, talked about Diwali, of course, certainly important to Indians and Hindus all around the world. Uh, First Lady Michelle Obama also being very proactive, uh, talking about causes like children, education, childhood obesity. So we've seen the presidency of Barack Obama break a lot of records. Now, as voters head to the poll on Tuesday, will they be able to elect the country's first female president? Well, we'll have Archid, the Black Lives Matter movement has sprung up after a number of police shootings of young black men. How effective has that campaign been? Well, race relations is a topic that is a hot button issue here. Certainly when it comes to protests, many African Americans that we spoke to say they do feel targeted simply because of the color of their skin. Over the past few years, several police brutality incidences where police have allegedly shot and killed an unarmed African American man has led to protests in many cities. Charlotte, Ferguson, cities across the United States that's launched the Black Lives Matter movement where Many African Americans say their lives matter, that police should not just target them because they're black. And that, of course, has created a conversation about racism in the United States. But many people say those protests happen, but then a few days later, it's business as usual. So the next U.S. president will have their work cut out for them as to dealing with this sensitive topic about race relations. And it's not just African Americans. We've also seen Sikhs. We've seen other members of the community being targeted simply because they look out of place. They look as foreigners. Sikhs say that they've been targeted because they have the turban on their head and are being mistook as the Taliban. So race relations and racism, a hot button issue, certainly on the front agenda 
as voters head to the polls.